Hello, everyone. Today, I want to introduce a special guest, Gary Emerson. Yes, I uh, am the Schuyler County historian. I was a uh, history teacher at Newfield Central School. I taught for 36 years before retiring about nine years ago. And um, then I went back to school and I've been working on a PhD in American history since then. I'm almost finished with that. Write articles for the Schuyler County Historical Society Journal and I also edit the journal. So, uh, and I give presentations on local history. And one of the things I talk about is the uh, the Seneca Serpent in Seneca Lake. Yes, I can't wait to talk to you about this. Um, this has been a myth, They, or maybe it's not, but it's been a story I've heard about ever since I was a child on Seneca Lake. And I've heard it called the Loch Ness Monster. And what are some of the other names for this mysterious I've, creature? Uh, people have called it the Seneca Nessie, Seneca Serpent, Seneca Monster. Um, those are some of the different names I've heard associated with it over time. So this just shows that other other lakes in New York State have had their own versions of some kind of a monster or a Nessie-like thing. Um, we see them, the slide here, there's a picture of the Loch Ness Monster, but uh, there's a similar picture that shows uh, that Lake Champlain in New York State uh, claims to have a, a monster, they call it Champ. Um, so that's another lake that has it. Uh, Cayuga Lake at one point uh, said that they had a, a monster in the lake and, uh, people have spotted it at various times. Right next door to Seneca Lake. Right, yep. And the two lakes are kind of connected by canals, waterways. So some people speculate that the monsters are like going back and forth between the lakes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like this article here because it says, uh, no such monster in Seneca Lake. <laughs> and yet uh, people have claimed that they've seen something in Seneca Lake. 1886, wow, that's going back. And uh, Canandaigua Lake in 1891, people claimed that there was something in that lake as well. Some described it as long as 70 feet in length. And uh, people used to go out in their, their boats, they took their shotguns with them because they were afraid of running into this monster. It was gonna devour them or something. But uh, other newspapers had a different idea about what was causing these sightings. They thought that some of these fishermen were using a little, little too much liquid bait. Uh, and uh, they were just kind of seeing things and imagining things. <laughs> and here's another story from Canandaigua Lake uh, that someone said they spotted something unusual in the lake. And that's another one of the Finger Lakes, although quite small. Right? Yeah, it's much, much smaller than either Seneca or Cayuga. But eventually uh, people did report that they'd seen a monster in Seneca Lake. These are some headlines from various sightings that people reported seeing some kind of a Seneca Lake monster. This is a story I mentioned to you earlier about the, in 1899, there was a, a gentleman, a blacksmith in Geneva who was out fishing with a net and he would cast his net out and he kept finding there were holes in his net. And uh, he was kind of curious as to what this thing was. It was punching these holes in his net, and chewing its way through it. So he would fix the net, throw it out, and he'd find the same thing the next day. So he decided there's something big out there and he decided he was gonna try and catch it. So the news spread very quickly about this strange creature lurking in Seneca Lake. Well, it is pretty deep. Yeah. Some people suspected it might be some kind of a creature that maybe traveled inland from the ocean or something, um, something that looked like this. Um, and, but uh, you know, they never actually found anything like that. that Another like a manatee. Yeah, it's, it's a type of a manatee. That some, some people suspected that that's what it was. So he had a bunch of men try to help him catch this thing. They all showed up and they were carrying a, you know, shotguns and a pistol. And they were gonna watch the net and see if they can catch what this creature was. That would ruin his net every night. So these guys just saw something flip the net and they started shooting wildly at this thing in the water, hoping to catch whatever it was. And uh, so all these farmers were there with fish spears and shotguns trying to pull this thing in. So this article is from the Geneva Daily Times, July 17th, 1899. Two of the men took hold of the net, one at each end, and slowly raised it. 
As soon as the serpentine body of the captive appeared above the surface, five shotguns rang out and the thing was riddled from its head almost to its tail. It proved to be a monster eel. Robert William Sellers, who was one of the party, said it was 13 feet long. Well, that's a pretty big creature. Whatever. This, this is a picture of a, a freshwater lake eel. So possibly it was something like this, but a very large, abnormally large eel. So an eel is essentially a lake snake, correct? Um, sort of, yeah. Good. It kind of looks like that. I wouldn't want to run into one of those. Me neither. I've never run into one in Seneca Lake, not like this. But uh, back in those days, apparently there were some in the lake. Uh, so in 1900, one of the best stories was about this steamboat. There used to be a lot of steamboats on Seneca Lake transporting people between Geneva and Watkins Glen. And in uh, July of 1900, uh, the steamboat Oteani, or some people pronounce it Oceani, um, was traveling in the evening. It was about seven o'clock at night. And they claimed that they spotted some kind of a creature in the lake. They weren't really sure what it was, but they thought it looked rather large. So this really helped boost the whole story of the Seneca Lake Sea Monster when this incident happened with this steamboat. And they claimed that it was 25 feet long with a, a triangular shaped head and a long tail and it had shark's teeth, these pointed shark's teeth. That does sound like a sea monster. <laughs> well, it looked pretty strange to them. And that was published in the Buffalo Review July 16th, 1900. This is also from the, that same newspaper. Um, and it talks about how the Oceani was uh, near Geneva, between, between Dresden and Willard, just about seven o'clock at night when they looked out and about 400 yards away from the boat, they saw uh, what they thought at first was an overturned boat. They thought someone was in distress. So they went over there to try to help it. When they looked through some binoculars, and uh, it looked to be about 15 feet long, what they were seeing with a very sharp bow and long, narrow stern. And um, said it, amidship, it was much broader and higher than at either end. So at first they thought this thing was just an overturned boat. But when they got a little closer and they slowed the boat down, they got within a hundred yards and they were gonna lower a boat to go out and find out what was going on. The object suddenly began to move away from them though. And that's when they started to realize that this thing apparently is not an overturned boat. There's some kind of a creature in the lake. So the captain yelled full speed ahead and the object was moving slowly and the steamboat's gaining on it very quickly. And uh, then the object suddenly turned and raised its head up and looked at the boat and opened its mouth. And that's when they saw these rows of sharp white teeth, like shark's teeth. Wow, that's interesting and scary. Yeah. Once they determined this was some kind of a creature in the lake, the captain decided that um, that they would ram it. Not exactly probably the best idea in the world that he had, but they were going <laughs> to ram this creature and try and kill it and take it on board, or either that or they're going to tow it into Geneva to show people what they found. And uh, so they turned, approached this thing. Of course, by this time, the deck is crowded with all these passengers. And um, so they start to prepare to ram this creature they see in the water. The captain cautioned everybody to get a life preserver and keep cool because he said he did not know what would happen when the boat struck the monster. Some of the women who were in tears retired to the cabin. The others showed as much interest and excitement as the men. The boat fell away some distance and turned to make the attempt to ram the creature. The captain signaled full speed ahead, and in a moment, the Atiani was underway. Everybody on deck was watching the monster and hardly a person was breathing normally. Okay, so uh, the boat is approaching this monster in the lake. As they got a little closer though, the monster suddenly went out of sight. It apparently went under the water, and dove down a little deeper, and it went right over the spot where it had just been, but they didn't ram it. So some of the people said they could see the outline of this creature's body from the boat as they went over it. And then as they prepared to give up and just continued to head to Geneva, suddenly someone shouted, there it is. Some of the women who were standing after deck said that the thing has come up. 
So the, this monster reappeared again, the boat. The passengers with the captain in advance ran to the stern of the vessel and within 50 yards, the long body of the monster was laying on the surface in practically the same position as when discovered. The captain ordered the boat put about and the attack was renewed. Instead of trying to strike the creature full in the side, the boat was maneuvered so that the starboard paddle wheel would strike it about midway between its head and tail. The boat went ahead under full steam. The monster paid no attention to it and with a thud, which all heard and felt, the boat struck the mark at which it aimed. The force of the impact threw everyone off his feet and the vessel careened violent, violently to port, but quickly righted. Wow, can you imagine? Yeah, so this thing was something pretty large if it kind of knocked the boat and um, threw everybody off their feet. I mean, it had to be a pretty big thing that they hit. So then they could see this thing lying along the side of the boat. I mean, it appeared to be dead, uh, but it did raise its head and they said it made a gasping sound and then it lay quiet. And uh, they, they claimed that its spinal column must have been broken and they thought it was dead. So the lifeboat was lowered and rowed to the side. And with the aid of the boat hooks, they put ropes around the body of this thing. And then they also fastened ropes on board and they were trying to pull this thing up and they were gonna try to haul it into the boat. But it proved to be too heavy and they, the rope slipped off near the tail and the tail dropped into the water. The weight of the other rope then became so great it began to slip through the hands of those holding it. It was just too heavy and they had to let it go or they were going to be pulled overboard. Oh and my heavens. The body struck the water, it sank and disappeared at a place where the lake is over 600 feet deep. So um, they lost this thing into the lake and they didn't, weren't able to recover it. So all they had were their, were their stories or eyewitness accounts of what they saw and what happened to them. So then they arrived into Geneva. It wasn't until about midnight before they got there. And they're all telling these stories about this monster they saw. And of course it became kind of a fish story because the length kept going from 25 feet to 50 feet. Um, but there was a guy on board who was a geologist, this Professor G.R. Elwood, and he was in one of the lifeboats that made a rope around the creature. So because this guy was a professor, people kind of felt that he should be someone credible and could be believable about what they saw and what happened. That these people weren't just having some kind of crazy story they made up. He had a, a name for this thing, uh, Cladastes or Clitistes? Yeah. Almost sounds like a type of dinosaur. Almost. And um, he said that's what it was. And uh, he claimed it was about 25 feet long from his inspection with a long tail, and uh, which was tapered until with about five feet of the end. And then it broadened out much like, looked like the end of a whale, a tail of a whale. And the creature, he said, probably weighed about a thousand pounds its head was perhaps four feet long and triangular in shape. Its mouth was very long and was armed with two rows of triangular white teeth as sharp as those of a shark, but in the shape more like those of the sperm whale. Its body was covered with a horny substance, which was as much like the carapace of a terrapin as anything else of which I know. This mm. horny substance was brown in color and of a greenish tinge. The belly of the creature, which I saw after the rope slipped and the carcass was going down, was cream white. Its eyes were round like those of a fish, and it did not wink. Yeah, so this is a really strange sounding creature and quite a mystery for these people about what this thing was. So this is from the Rochester Herald uh, after this incident happened, and um, they kind of poo-pooed this whole story and thought this was just a fake story. Uh, about what happened here. They, they believe it was just uh, some story that Geneva was making up to get people to come there and, and get more people to visit their city. And uh, so they said it was just a storyteller who made up some yarn about some 13 foot long snake. And, uh, and uh, so they thought this is all just something people whittled up out of their imagination, that it wasn't really true at all. The skeptics, obviously. So they thought it was just like a, you know, a cheap rag newspaper just making up some silly story trying to get attention for their city. 
So it's pretty pretty interesting story that this happened that really kind of lends credence that there was something in Seneca Lake. And I mean, they always did, they hit something. So Gary, isn't that amazing that there were so many eyewitnesses? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously they they with all these eyewitnesses, they all saw the same thing. They witnessed something and the boat obviously hit something. So it's kind of curious as to what this thing might have been. Uh, we'll probably never know for certain, but uh, there was something pretty large in the water to knock the boat off kilter like it did. And so it's a little curious. Curious and mysterious. Gary, thank you so much. We're going to continue this in part two.